Hello everyone. I am Dibanshu, working as a senior software engineer with Microsoft and working on Depro project. Well, today, let me take you through an overview of configuration API in Depper. Okay, so to start with the very basics, why so much first, so much focus on configuration? All right, so it is a recommended practice to keep configurations separate from the code. In fact, this is one of the points in building great apps by 12 factor, wherein we can definitely see it forms basis for a clean contract with the underlying OS and to offer maximum portability between execution environments. This is a direct quote from 12factor.net. I'm not showing here the whole page that is dedicated to this point, but rather few simple quotes, wherein it talks about direct violation of 12factor if apps store config as constants in the code, and that config should be separate from the written code in such a way that the code can be made open source at any moment without any compromise. So yep, we see that it is an important part, definitely. Let's consider a very basic scenario, wherein we can have few microservices running in a production environment. And the interesting part is that each of these microservices can have their own configuration, correct? Such configuration can include details like application configuration, configuration required for database, some third party related info like some communication channel configuration, queues, and other infrastructure. It may also have URLs of other microservices to talk to. In addition, each microservice will have a separate configuration for different environments, such as dev, production, QA, UAT, etc. Imagine the situation now that how much difficult it can be to manage all these different sets of configuration. Well, that's where the practice or importance of some config server comes into scenario. It can be a centralized server which you have custom developed on top of Redis or Memcachete or anything else, or it can be a cloud solution like Azure App Config or AWS App Config. So now we have a solution in place wherein we have our microservices talking to config server, let's say a centralized config server, let's say. But is it the final solution? I would say that one problem still remains. Going one step ahead, your application code, if you think, is still tied to a particular config solution. So let's say tomorrow as an application developer, you decide to migrate your config server from a Redis store to Azure App Config or vice versa. You will have to directly change it somewhere in your code to read from the new config manager. So once your config server changes, your microservice code needs to change in this scenario. But what if we are able to make our application free from the understanding of underlying config server, agnostic to it, and just are able to use config as and when required inside our application? Advocating that logic, Dapper comes in. Well, I assume here that we have a basic understanding of Dapper that how does it help in microservices development, lifecycle, and how different building blocks associated with Dapper can help quick development of services. So here we can see that Dapper is associated as a sidecar with each of these microservices and now your microservice code will remain untouched even if some config server like the replacement of this config server from a particular type to another type happens. Dapper is responsible for all that communication. Microservice needs to just fetch or subscribe or fetch configurations from this Dapper sidecar. Okay, so just for a quick recap, let's have a quick look at goals of Dapper keeping configurations in mind. There is no limitation with regards to language or framework. A new language comes in which you want to write uh, application, your application uh, in that language, but you are able to kick it off as a process. So we should be able to run it with Dapper. No change to the way we store our configurations. Yes, config is going to be registered as a building block. The core of Dapper is these set of well-documented APIs that provide a parity across multiple protocols at the same time. So whether gRPC or HTTP does not matter, the function of config API is guaranteed to be same. It runs well on Kubernetes or on bare metal or like Raspberry Pi. It is also supporting multiple architectures, Intel Arc, Mac, Linux, or Windows. All right, as we talked about, it is one of the various building blocks that Dapper offers. And as we were discussing earlier, it can be used to access application configurations and get notified of any update to them. 
So in fact, this slide also represents something similar as previous, like Dapper having multiple building blocks, uh, config being one of them. So I will skip past it. Dapper has a good deal of documentation written on uh, docsdapper.io, wherein anyone willing to try out Dapper configuration API can clearly see that what all components it offers currently for config API, what state they are in, and also how to start using this API. Currently, Dapper supports configurations via three components, Redis, PostgreSQL, and Azure App Config. I'm very happy to announce that in fact, the PostgreSQL and App Config we have started to support with our current version 1.9 release. We can very well check the state of Dapper components in Dapper documentation. Also, please feel free to refer these docs for understanding the meaning of each of uh, the status the component is in. So, the configuration API basically gets registered as a component with Dapper for taking care of configurations. As in other APIs of Dapper application can read or get configurations via HTTP or gRPC protocol. Apps can subscribe to some particular keys or all changes in configuration as per their own requirements. So here, like we have uh, defined our config redis.yml, let's say. So the type is component, the kind is component. We can specify any name for this particular configuration store, like uh, we have a space file here, config store. Uh, the type which space file, uh, which particular uh, component we are using beneath the scenes for this configuration. Uh, like for the demo purpose also, I'm going to use Redis. So here taking the same example, configuration.redis is a type. Few metadata information, which basically is used to connect to this Redis store. Basically, there are three APIs which Dapper configuration provides, get configuration, which can be for fetching all the configurations from this store or for a particular key. Similarly for subscribe, either to, sub, uh, to subscribe to any configuration change, that is to all configuration changes, or to subscribe to a particular configuration change. Similarly, there is unsubscribe config, wherein we can specify uh, the subscription ID uh, to which we want to unsubscribe. All right, so enough of the theory part. Let me quickly jump to a demo. For the demo purpose, I'm again uh, like showing the same config YAML that we had seen a uh, few seconds earlier. Here, the name for the demo purpose I have chosen to be configurer. Uh, kind as component and the type is configuration.redis. All right, so for the demo purpose, I am going to I have basically created an app and this is using JS SDK from Dapper Org. Uh, so all the heavy lifting like uh, to form the client and basically uh, the basis on uh, the way this configuration API will work beneath the scenes is done by the JS SDK. I have simply written few lines of code in my index.js wherein I basically instantiate a Dapper client wherein I specify a Dapper host, which is like localhost or 127.0.0.1 in my case. GRPC port, this port will be the same port with which I will instantiate my Dapperized app. The protocol that I'm using, the GRPC one. Now here, I'm simply using configuration uh, to fetch the configuration for this client using the config name, which is configurer, which is nothing but the same name that we had given in the Redis config YAML. Moving further, I want to subscribe to any change, uh, uh, any configuration change inside this configurer store. So here, I'm simply subscribing, registering the config name and a callback, wherein I'm simply printing out the configuration update. Here, if you see, I'm using simply subscribe, there are other options possible, like subscribing with some keys, uh, that is listening only for the updation of those keys or subscribing with metadata. But I'm uh, simply uh, trying to listen to any change in any of the configuration, so I'm simply subscribing. Okay, uh, let's quickly check out that uh, what do we have in our Redis store right now. We have two keys here, dbcon and dbname. dbname is simply my app db. dbcon is like new con string for. So let's start our app and okay. 
so let's start our app here we are specifying like simply dapper run and app id to start with app protocol as grpc the grpc port is 50002 i think this is the same port with which we were trying to connect to in our client yes 50002 this components path this components path is the same path in which this redis config yaml resides so that i am able to register it as a component and finally to start my node app okay let's start it here we can see that uh, we have like received initially the configurations that we have specified new con string for my app dbsdb name let's okay we have already subscribed to the changes okay so let's try to update any of the key here uh, dbcon let me try to update it from 4 to 5 let's say okay so i receive an update over here uh okay i just uh okay here i don't need to depend on a particular app to listen to these configurations i can simply i could have simply used like postman so let's say i want to listen to uh okay so i want to use the get configuration alpha uh, api here i'm not specifying any key any metadata so what i have received all the key value pairs that i have in my redis store and here the dbcon i think this is was this was the updated value that we had specified yes new con string 5 and the value for db name again we can subscribe over here okay if i subscribe to uh yes i am i have received the subscription id let me try to change again some value let's say i space by 8 over here okay so I received a line item here wherein I'm being told that dbcons updated values new con string 8 okay I could have also subscribed to a particular key over here or I could have also fetched only a particular key in my get API so if I want to let's say get for a particular key let's say I want to fetch for this dbcon so I should be able to receive Yes, I should be able to fetch only this dbcon value. Okay, so uh, before we close this session, okay, let me quickly show you that uh, we have documentation available for this configuration API, wherein you can quickly check that what are the APIs available, get configuration and the subscribe configuration, the unsubscribe configuration. This unsubscribe configuration will be using the subscription ID, which we saw that uh, we received while we had subscribed and we had received an ID over there so this is pretty much it and uh, there, uh, you can also check out in fact the depo repository itself so uh, parallel to the depo repository in the depo org we have components contrib wherein you can check out the configuration API the interface uh, the interface used for it so here in the components contrib you can go to configuration and here you can check out the interface if you check this store.go you will find that it has got these interface uh, these apis get subscribe unsubscribe all these things and uh, just parallel to it you will also see the implementations that we talked about that there are three implementations currently redis postgresql and the app config so when we were fetching or we were subscribing this was a piece of code that was running basically the redis one okay so at the end i would just like to specify some quick links which uh, you may find handy for the documentation or for the depot repository uh all right so i think that's it thank you